Yeah. Uh, yeah. Damn, eat this shit. Yeah. 16, probably was the last time I missed. Brewing learns lessons, so trying to slide and he most wanted. Double this, the double that, the devil is a lie. Why he ain't pull off, he ain't have a chance to try. He ain't see it coming, popped out on him by surprise. Fat I got in that room, turned to Alicia Keys. Oh, I'm bro, X tied, a bit the cheese. I'm North Philly right now, the Blumberg Project, the heart of North Philly. It got so bad that the feds like, we can't really stop what's going on, but we can just knock your project down. He said, I never in my life seen a hood that nobody never told. Nobody never said nothing. Nobody never dropped a dime. Even the older people, they not telling on y'all. They love y'all. He said, but we got a job to do. So by any means necessary, we're gonna bring y'all down. Billy's drill scene is at its end, is what a lot of people are saying. And some are hoping now that almost all relevant players are dead or in jail. Lil Bucks, Leaf Ward, Livy, Hop Out Blick, G12 Zai, Hood Famous J, and Hood Tally are just some of the names of the rappers who are currently in jail or prison for various reasons. Earth Street Man Man, Blumberg G's, J100, King Lord, Lil 60, and dozens of other rappers have been killed over the last four years. On one hand, you have the district attorney vowing to disband all sets, going for the biggest targets and even calling them out by name, which is well documented on this channel. Then, on the other hand, you have the actual criminals gunning for the biggest killers themselves and trying to take them out. These are two of the biggest factors in the 35% decrease in homicides in comparison to the same date last year. Not the only reasons, but two of the biggest reasons in my opinion. An ABC News review of preliminary crime data from the 10 largest U.S. cities showed that heading into the last week of the year, seven of the municipalities have seen double-digit year-over-year declines in 2023 homicides, including an 11% drop in New York City, a 16% decrease in Los Angeles, and a 13% reduction in Chicago. Back in North Philly in 2022, coming off the most violent year in recorded history in Philadelphia, which was 2021, amongst all the shootings and murders going on throughout the city, one place stood out. The neighborhoods of Strawberry Mansion and Sharswood. Here is a heat map of the shootings in Philly that year. Out of the 2,335 shootings that took place that year, including homicides, by far the most took place in the 22nd Police District. In the middle of the district are two warring factions. Some of the main generators of violence come from a set known as the Black Flags. The Black Flags mostly come from the area around what was formerly known as Blumberg. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps the channel out more than you know. Hey, man. Nobody out here. I'm thinking of pigs, I ain't. <laughs> man, shit. I'm not morning shit. <laughs> man, on the block. Stuck my cops, stuck my eyes. Come on, man, I know where the fuck you at, bro. We gotta keep them clocks. I ain't cracking no fools, man. The Norman Blumberg Apartments, also known as the Blumberg Homes, were a 510 unit high rise public housing complex in the Sharswood neighborhood, owned and operated by the Philadelphia Housing Authority. They're reviewed by many as a symbol of the city's failure to address concentrated poverty and crime and were partially demolished in 2016. The Blumberg Apartments were designed by the engineering firm 
Escalante and Klaus and consisted of 108 row houses, two 18-story towers with one, two, and three bedroom apartments and a 13-story building for seniors. The initial construction of the housing complex cost $5.5 million. During construction, the blocks between 24th and 22nd Street were consolidated with Redner, Bolton, and Nassau Streets being closed to form an eight-acre block. The Blumberg Homes opened in Philadelphia in June 1967. Initially, these apartment towers were welcomed by residents and praised for features like a 900-square-foot garden and community programming. However, as the buildings in the neighborhood aged, significant problems began to surface. In February of 1979, the deteriorating conditions at Blumberg Apartments spurred dramatic protests. During a severe snowstorm that winter, 40 residents blocked traffic, divorced their grievances over lack of heating, burst pipes, and general neglect. This event highlighted the acute distress among the tenants. The situation worsened in 1982 when a tragic accident resulted in the death of a young boy who fell from a 13th floor window, underscoring the unsafe living conditions. In addition to increasing maintenance costs, the PHA was plagued by corruption, negligence, and waste. An internal audit found that the housing authority had, quote, no system of internal controls to adequately protect or even measure its multi-million dollar inventory of parts and supplies, unquote. In 1989, a tenant died while trying to repair a chronically broken elevator. The Blumberg Homes elevator contractor was accused of defrauding the housing authority by intentionally vandalizing and repairing the elevators at the PHA property. That same year, the community was further shaken by four homicides within a week at the Blumberg Homes, signaling rampant crime and insecurity, which still occurs to this day in the area. The situation was exasperated by the closure of key educational institutions in 2013, namely Reynolds Elementary School and Vaux Junior High School. This left the educational needs of the Sharswoods neighborhood severely underserved, contributing further to the community's challenges. While surrounding neighborhoods in northwest Philadelphia began to see signs of reinvestment and revitalization, Sharswood lagged significantly behind. On March 19, 2016, the Philadelphia Housing Authority demolished Blumberg Apartments' two-story family housing towers. The 108 low-rise homes were demolished shortly after. In December 2019, PHA opened 83 prefabricated low-rise apartments built using modular wood frame construction techniques. The Blumberg 83 development was financed through HUD's Rental Assistance Demonstration Program with low-income housing tax credits and serves people making between 20 and 60 percent of the area median income. This is the environment people like Air G's and Jump Out BM, among many others in the drill rap scene, come from. In May of 2022, the death of Ear's former friend, Burke Street Man Man, rocked the city, especially the neighborhood of Sharswood. In 2020, the zip code of 19121, where Sharswood is, there were 30 shooting deaths, according to the Office of the City Controller. In 2022, there were 33, compared to just one zip code over, 19122, there was just one death by shooting. 2023 saw the same trend as the numbers were lower, but still disproportionate at 21 and 4, respectively. The amount of people lost in this short time frame from one neighborhood is almost impossible to fathom. The ones who took the brunt of this the hardest were the families. And in some of those families were young men between the ages of 16 and 25 who were ready to throw their lives away in the name of revenge and it seemed to not matter to them the effect they were having on their immediate surroundings and the city as a whole. As rap and hip hop enjoyers of all ages sat in shock as this song after this song came out basically documenting their crimes, it came as little surprise that almost all factors on both sides are dead or in jail, or in Bloodberg Ears case, on the run. Poundside Pop, and Shushido, OT7 Kwani, Hood Tally have all been shot and are lucky to be alive today. The list of dead rappers could be way higher if they weren't so lucky. On April 4th, 2024, Jump Out BM and Blumberg Air would release a song called Murder One, 
and it is the perfect encapsulation of everything that is wrong, eerie, and soulless with drill rap, especially in Philly. The song starts off with a familiar but ominous song, O Fortuna, from Carl Orff's Carmina Burana, known to many through its dramatic tones and has become synonymous with epic moments in media and culture. The name itself, O Fortuna, translates directly from Latin as O Fate, highlighting its focus on the concept of fate. Now, were these two pre-thinking the 13th century meaning of this intro to their drill song? Probably not, but it does set the tone for the song. When we see Ear making various gang signs, including cracking fours and making a gun point at a drop thumb, which is a diss to the op. Then we get to the regular drill song, Jump Out BM, with very specific remarks to very specific people. Them niggas shot baby flag and then the nigga died. Judge gang, them other side young is gonna get that Johnny high. Them niggas troll fat car and then sh got shot. The people who know what he's talking about know exactly what he's talking about. The aired verse starts with a very direct statement that would become clearer a few weeks later. Fat I got in that room turned to Alicia Keys. Oh um, bro, X tie, that nigga bit the cheese. The 19-year-old rapper known as Jump Out BM, whose real name was Namir Jernigan, was fatally shot on Sunday, April 7th, three days after the release of the video we just talked about. The shooting occurred around 5.40 p.m. on the 2500 block of Harlan Street, where police discovered over a dozen shell casings from three different caliber guns and a blood trail along the block. Jernigan was shot in the head. In a desperate attempt to save his life, his friends rushed him to Temple University Hospital, where he succumbed to his injuries three hours later. While the incident was initially investigated as a homicide, new evidence from surveillance video led detectives to believe that the shooting might have been an accidental discharge from within Jernigan's own group. Further details on how the accident occurred have not been disclosed as the investigation continues. On April 19th, the Instagram page, Philly Scoreboard, posted that Blumberg aired is wanted for murder. The very next post stated that someone was telling and it made the Eard bar from earlier more clear. As far as the case or whatever Eard is accused of, I can't speculate right now publicly. There are rumors and theories floating around, but I'll wait till a concrete outcome to comment. So for right now, Eard is doing the race and the ends of his story might be the same as everyone else on this channel. I'm going to leave it there for now. Thanks for watching American Confidential. And until next time, be safe.